The Legend of Link is an unofficial ROM hack of the first Legend of Zelda game for the NES. It rapidly went from underground success to one of the most influential NES hacks of this generation. Created by Infidelity in 2014, this hack pushes the limits of the iconic 80s Nintendo hardware by reimagining the world of the first Legend of Zelda engine and borrowing elements and mechanics from other installments like Link's Awakening and A Link to the Past. Let's meet the author behind the code and learn about his first steps from dipping his toes into basic NES ROM hacking to hear about some of his peers in the game hacking community that helped and even inspired him, concluding in one of the most stunning NES ROM hacks out there. We will take a dive into his work and even talk about some of the projects that helped pave the way to the creation of this game. Get ready to learn about The Legend of Link's origin. Let's dig up some early concept test runs, witness an exclusive never-before-released secret in the game, and let's find out what else he's been up to lately. Thank you, thank you for joining us uh, to, to my channel. Thank you for agreeing to do this in Fidelity. Um, I gotta say, The Legend of Link, it, it holds a special place in my heart because your, your game, your hack, but in this case, your game, because you changed so much about that engine, your game uh, really made me take uh, hacks in a whole different approach. Because before you, or uh, I, I hack, like, like game hacks meant let's change the graphics, let's change the text. And, mm -hmm. and you prove that you can just take a game and completely flip it on its side, you know what I mean? Yes, I do, thank you very, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much, really, really, I do. The, the Legend of Link, uh, for the ones who don't know, is a complete overhaul of the, it's a reimagining of the world of Zelda, the first game release, the Legend of Zelda one, which we'll be referring to uh, the Legend of Zelda engine for other people who are not familiar with the lingo. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a must play for fans. It's a must play uh, for for even you know non fans because it is the genesis of a franchise and it is such a great game. Even back on the net, even now it hasn't aged uh, you know bad at all. So uh, your hack. Can you tell us more about your hack? That is a hack I created starting in 2010. Um, before that, I created a ROM hack called Mega Man Ultra back in 2005, 2006, around that time. Um, right after that, I was in the process of creating the sequel to it, Mega Man Ultra 2, The Rise of X. Um, after that, um, I had some personal issues arise that popped up and I had to step away from ROM hacking for, for a while. And right as even as of today the only release of ultra 2 that's out there on the internet is just the alpha build because i don't have any of the original material any of the original source files it's whatever what what's out there now i think romhacking.net actually has it has the alpha i think um that's what i got mine from so yeah yeah so that's it that's even that's that's all i have myself is just that alpha build um then after that I kind of came back into it with Tetris Zero. I wanted mm -hmm. to get back into ROM hacking, so I did a little two-player two player hack of Tetris, the Nintendo version of Tetris. And um, then I really started getting into, all right, I want to get back into this. I want to make another hack like I did with Mega Man Ultra. And I've always wanted to try to attempt The Legend of Zelda. And back then, the big, big, big ROM hack of... The Legend of Zelda that I knew of was called Zelda Outlands. Also have it. <laughs> yeah, I, I played a little bit of it. Um, it looks fantastic. But what I noticed, see, what I love to do is code. I love mm -hmm. editing code, writing assembly, 6502 ASM is what I do. And when I loaded up that game, and I'm like, okay, that's very text heavy editing, a lot of graphical editing, a lot of sprite editing. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So 
when I go into doing a ROM hack, I, I always say, can I do what's already out there better? Can I do better than what's already out there? Can mm -hmm. I match it? Or, and the other thing is, is it enough? Is it something that intrigues me? So at the time I was thinking, all right, let me, let me see what I can do with the legend of Zelda. Let me see what I can do. So I started sifting through the code. That game is a mapper one MMC one chip that it uses. Um, so I was checking out the code and seeing what I could do, checking out Link's mechanics as to how he, you know, his physical properties as to how he walks, his collision detection with sprites and the walls and everything, anything of solid object or water, what was air, things of that nature. And then once I found out where I can subroutine to create different actions for him, I was able to create um, some games call it the Pegasus boots or the Pegasus shoes, whichever, whichever ones they want to call it, um, made it so he could dash around. So that was really fun to see. Um, when Link throws the boomerang, I wanted to have that style from A Link to the Past where it can attach to an item and that can come mm -hmm. back to Link. Whereas in the original Zelda, I always thought it was funny how when you throw a boomerang and it touches a rupee, it, you automatically get it, even though the boomerang's three quarters of the way from the screen from Link. So I, I added code to make that happen. Then I created the hook shot assembly for Link and I, that, I, I absolutely love that. So um, on, the, on, on YouTube, I, there's, you act, uh, there's three videos that actually show the conception of the, the code that I did for the boomerang, the Pegasus shoes, the, um, the hook shot, those are all out there. So seeing all that. And um, that's all I can really, really think of is like th th those three things. Once I got those things working and saw that, hey, this I like the, the results that I was getting, then I just kind of refined it from there, fine tuned it from there. So it was, it was, it was a fun journey, fun process doing all that. <laughs> and, and I gotta say, when, when I first saw the final result, to me, it was like, this is not, okay, it's cool, but this is not Legend of Zelda one. Like I, I did not believe you were still using the same engine until I stumbled upon uh, your, your test videos, your, your proof of concept on your channel, on the YouTube channel. And that's when I realized, oh my God, like, like this, this dude really took the engine and just build up so much around it where it is completely unrecognizable at that point. Yes. Um, the, the game, the, the early Nintendo games, particularly The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers, those two games, how they construct their screens, it's they, um, people on the internet have um, terminized it as, a, as columns. They'll have um, mm -hmm. a 16 by 16 block and just come straight down. And, you know, obviously because of ROM chips back in the eighties, they were very expensive and you had to work with the limited amount of space that those program ROM chips had. So the brilliant minds of Nintendo, the coders there, they came up with these ideas of, right, we'll, we'll have a column based so you can repeat certain columns. And it seems like you have these long, vast levels, but if you notice, and particularly with like Super Mario Brothers, you'll see a vast column of just blue sky, blue sky, blue sky, and then the ground. And that's one individual column that's repeated a bunch of times. The Legend of Zelda uses that exact same format. And you'll notice there's certain sections that look the same. Um, so what I did was I studied the ROM, studied how the game constructed its screen, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to have free reign of um, having eight by eight tiles anywhere I want on the screen. So I completely deleted the engine and created my own engine. And oh, then, okay. That explains a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because you're also constrained to how you can assign pallets to a block in, um, in Nintendo. What they do is they have a 32 by 32 grid and to assign a pallet to a block, there's, there's, um, there's one byte and inside that byte, there's eight individual bits. And those bits control, you know, one of the bytes for the pallet for one of those 16 by 16 blocks in that 32 by 32 grid. And I'm, I had to try and create a way to just make it so I can have each individual 16, 16 block have its own pallet. 
separated from a 32 by 32 grid. So it was, that was, that, that took a lot of time. And like you said, you stumbled upon, you know, my proof of concept videos and seeing how that was all done. And I wanted to show everybody like, Hey, you know, I can have anything I want on the screen anywhere. So um, that was, that was, that was quite a, quite a process to do that. Um, but what I needed to do was I had to switch mappers. Mm -hmm. So like I said earlier, that game is a, an MMC one game and I'm very familiar with mapper five, which is the most advanced mapper for that Nintendo ever made for Nintendo, the, the NES. So I converted the very first thing I did to Zelda one was I converted it from mapper one to mapper five. And then from there, that's when I started dissecting the ROM, figuring out where the engine was, seeing how the engine worked. And then I just deleted it and created a whole new um, engine for drawing onto the screen. So I can have individual eight by eight tiles anywhere, the entire light world and the entire dark world. There's nothing there that's repeated. Those are all individual. So is As, it fair to say, sorry for interrupting you there. No you're using your own custom mapper is that is that what, what you're saying or you are shifting between two different mappers nope this i i didn't write the mapper the mapper is all nintendo's code all i did was i changed how the when the reason why there's mappers just a little background in case anybody doesn't know what these mapper things are um nintendo created mappers because they they needed to have larger games larger rom space larger enemies and larger backgrounds and things like that. Like we wouldn't be able to have Super Mario 2 or Mario 3 without these, these mappers. Uh, same thing goes for like all your Mega Man games, Metroid, you name it. Big game games that are, you know, vastly superior to say Super Mario Brothers. Mm, if so I'm not mistaken, Mario 3 uses the diagonal uh, scrolling. It's a MMC5, uh, right? Okay. That one is a um, MMC3. MMC3. A, oh, okay. Okay. The MMC3 chip. They use that, and it yes, and it has the eight-way scroll to allow you to scroll in any direction. That's right. Yep, you're right. So what I did with um, Mapper One is I just you just have to change. You have to there's there's documentation that shows what Mapper One is and what um, hardware addresses it uses, and then you just try to swap those to use what Mapper Five uses. So if you're going to switch from a mapper, you need to make sure that what a game does on mapper one can mapper five do the same thing. And the reason why I picked mapper five is because you're allowed 1024 kilobytes, which is one megabyte of program ROM. And I'm a big fan of CHR ROM, which is character ROM, your graphics. And I love doing um, what's called uh, CHR animation swapping swapping the graphics out kind of like a flip book you know of like mm -hmm. if you did a stick figure yeah. so that in my legend of link you will see a lot of that if you were to open that in a debugger and watch particularly the intro where i, where I have the the scrolling story with all the different versions of link you'll see it actually you know you'll see the animation and that's me just swapping the graphics page that's 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 the chr swapping Wow. Same thing if you were to open my ROM in a tile editor, such as TLP editor or, um, uh, yeah, Tile Air Pro or um, YYCHR, if you were to open it up in that, you would also be able to just scroll through with your mouse and or page up, page down, and you will see all the different animations each page that you flip through. <laughs> so, and that's how I did that. That's, that's how I did all my, my animation. So again, Mapper 5, I picked that Mapper because I wanted more program ROM for more you know, code, and then I wanted more graphics. So I, that's, that was a shoo-in. That, that was you know, no, no brainer, pick Mapper 5 for that. And so with that, that's why. So it's not a custom, I didn't create the Mapper. I just decided to use that Mapper as the, the new Mapper for that game. So that's why I yes. picked it. You can see because freedom you of so much. You know, there's a lot of freedom that you're given with that mapper, size wise, um, different bank switching routines. You can switch, 
anywhere from eight kilobytes to 32 kilobytes. It's, 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 it's massively impressive. You can swap out the SRAM. Some people call it write RAM. Some people call it SRAM save RAM, where you save all your data. You can swap that out. That's how I was able to create the file system for files one through three. So, because I was able to swap all those individual sections out, save it in the ROM, and then pull up a new file and be able to inject those into the SRAM 6000 through 7FFF. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got it, got it. All right. Um, before we go into a Q&A section, um, for the ones who don't know who, who uh, Infidelity is, right? You're one of the most prolific members of romhacking.net. You joined the site in 2014, according to your profile, uh, and you have worked on Super Mario, Super Mario All-Stars hack for the NES, which is essentially having the same roster of the games for the Super NES into the NES. Uh, you have work of Legend of Link, which is the subject of this video today. Uh, Mega Man Ultra, as you mentioned, the Super Mario Brothers 3 battery hack, which uh, allows you to save progress as if you were in Mario World. Uh, yep. Mega Man 4 for the Super NES, which is one of your more, most uh, recent uh, work, if I'm not mistaken. Tetris oh, Zero as well, as you have mentioned it. Uh, and then there's a lot of work on what you, I'm glad you actually got into that because I had questions about that. Uh, sure. Master Master Metro and Ninja Game changes from the MMC1 to MMC3 hack, which is basically, I'm assuming, you'd upgrade from MMC3 to 5, right? Yeah, so basically what, so I have no idea who did it, and I'm actually flattered and appreciated that someone actually took the time to take all my conversions and submit them to romhacking.net. I thought that was really cool. Um, I was getting messages from random people about it, and I'm like, where are you getting these? I, I thought I had them on a different site. And I found out somebody put, and I'm like, oh, wow. And I, I actually randomly wanted to check my profile on there because, again, I'm, I'm rarely on these sites. So and this profile I, is not you? Oh, it is me. It's oh, okay, me. Okay. I, have a, oh, I created a profile, but somebody, um, people are able to upload things and, you know, submit them and say, hey, this is the author. And they, they showed where I originally had them. So okay. the, um, the devs at romhacking.net know me. And they know, oh, okay, this is Infidelity's work. Okay, so we'll put that up there because they know where I originally submitted my my um, IPS files or text files. I mean, and according to my I, I saw all my Mapper 3 conversions because the, there was a time, I forget what, I, I honestly forget what, what year it was. It was either the late 2000s or the very early 2010s. I can't remember. And the big thing that I was getting into was, oh, just... Because when I was converting games to different mappers, I, I really wanted to see, well, what else could I do? So I started going through certain games that I enjoyed playing and like, oh, that's a mapper one. Oh, let me see if I can bring that to three. Because a lot of people were doing repos, repo carts. Mm. And a lot of the very popular mapper for a repo cart is MMC3. So I was like, oh, okay. So I started changing some mapper one games to... MMC3. And I wasn't, you know, that there's there's some that might have some quirks because at the time there was probably an address or two that I probably may have missed. But every time I submit my work, I always have very um, detailed explanations as to what I did and, and how it was done. So if anyone that understands the, the work that I'm doing, they could look at that and and if they have an issue with a certain game or a certain mapper that I tried converting and there's an issue, they can look at my file because I, I, I list everything very sp in specific detail as to what I did. And then they can check that out and say, oh, OK. And then they can kind of work through that if, if there's an issue. I, I did the best I could back then. And that's another thing that's kind of like, oh, it's kind of like I'm, I'm glad they submitted it. And then there's a point that it's like, oh, I wish. I wish I knew about this and you didn't do that. <laughs> so that's, you know, something, I think, I think it's Ninja Turtles. I think the first one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I think there, there was an issue with that. With there's, one of my there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, according again to, to my notes, I have uh, <laughs> that you submitted uh, four, let me check, uh, four technical documents, worked in 40 hacks and contribute to over 20 other entries just on, you know, from hacking.net alone. <laughs> And you're yeah, right, I've been, Ninja Gate, I've been busy. Ninja Turtles, 
<laughs> yeah, I've been I, I love doing this stuff. I I love 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 Nintendo. Love doing this stuff. Um, yeah, just um, I know there's um there was a Mega Man when I when I released Mega Man Ultra at that point not there weren't that many ROM hacks that had the sound changes the music changes, and there was a Japanese I I want to say it was a Japanese game. It's called Rockman Exile from B Hornet. Um, that inspired me to want to have different music in my game. So I found um, a Japanese website and I tried translating the documentation as to how the, the sound engine was for Mega Man 2. And I tried converting it to English and bringing it over. I was um, trying to make it so make it easier for people that wanted to hack the music as well in Mega Man 2. And a great ROM hacker, great contributor to the scene, Matrix Z, M-A-T-R-I-X with the letter Z after it, mm -hmm. um, created uh, Megaflex, which is the level editors from Mega Man 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I don't know if it is for 6 or not. Um, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant coder. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Can't, can't say good enough things about him. Um, he created a, a called uh, a Mega Man 4 comprehensive documentation about uh, about how to all the things that were in Mega Man 4. But what he also did was create a documentation on the sound engine. And what was really nice was that he also took my notes from the Mega Man 2 engine and, and brought them over to his documentation. So we kind of, you know, kind of sharing notes as to, you know, what I found figured out for Mega Man 2 and what he was doing with Mega Man 4 and, you know, just kind of sharing, sharing notes and comparing how both engines worked and, and such. Um, so that was really nice. That was probably one of the, the earliest documentations I, I think has, that was put on romhacking.net was the sound engine for Mega Man 2. Um, so that was, yeah, just been, just been busy, you know, working on hacks and working on different things. And I always try to keep myself busy with it. It's tough, you know. <laughs> What what's uh, turning the wheels in your head for you to to achieve stuff like this? Determination, drive, things like that. That's I mean, if there's something that intrigues me, makes my hair stand on end, makes me <laughs> if there's something that I think about and it keeps gnawing away at me, that's when I know I have something. That's something. It, it has to be something that really intrigues me and gnaws at me, and I can't stop thinking about it. Where it's like, wait, I can do this. This this can work, and then. I'm typically the person where once I jump into something, I have to see it through. I can't abandon it. Um, however, case, uh, however, what the only, the sole exception to that is Mega Man Ultra 2. I mean, again, I lost everything to that. Kind of lost, that was probably the only game that I lost motivation because of um, the beautiful Rockman Minus Infinity. That, that is the best Mega Man ROM hack ever. I think that's the, that's the, top of the food chain right there that's the number one i'll never top that <laughs> no, you're not that far man, but you're right that is that is, that is one of the greatest uh, hacks uh, mega man speaking probably d1 but you're not that far ahead either <laughs> i appreciate that i still can't believe the love that ultra gets it's that's i mean i'm glad that people see it for what it was because minus infinity should be better than mine um any game that comes after that should be better than mine you know i would like to think that um but it's still nice that even after what what is it 16 years or something like that that's wow. 10 10 something something like that that people still enjoy it and play it and that that real there was someone on twitch i think that um did a did a speed run of it and they did it in less than 20 minutes they found all the little glitches that you can do in the game and that and it was just an honor that they picked my game my rom hack to to showcase that to, for a speed run. I thought that was really, that was really neat to, you know, to find out that that happened. That was, that was really neat that that game still gets love and attention. Even with, like I said, even with minus infinity coming out there. Um, it's just, I like to think that, you know, people drew inspiration from work that I submitted so long ago and, you know, build off of what I released and build off of other coders like Kuja Killer, who has done, um, Mega Man Odyssey. Um, I, I owe a lot to Kuja Killer. He he taught me a lot about assembly back in the early to um, mid two thousands. 
So um, I owe him, you know, I owe him a great debt of gratitude for the knowledge that I possess with, with how I've been doing assembly. Um, but yeah, but seeing games like that and all the other Mega Man games, Mega Man ROM hacks that came after that, they're, they're beautiful looking and, and the coding changes and it's, it's, it's incredible to see. It, it really is. So, um, but yeah, the thing that, you know, what, what, if there's so, like I said, if something that intrigues me and, and gnaws away at me, that's, that's, that's what gives me the drive to, to see things through. And then again, is it, is it something that, is it, is it worth doing? Is it something that I can outdo? And that, that, that's the other thing too. Like when I saw Zelda Outlands, as, as I said earlier, you know, is this something that I can, you know, outdo? Can I outdo what has already been done? And if it's, it's something that I know that I can do. <laughs> I've been, I've been, and, and again, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for how people, you know, responded to, to the legend of link. I, I put a, that was three years, three years of work. Um, Thanatos zero did all the, the in-game, uh, sprite work took, uh, took Thanatos uh, a year, a year just to, to draw all the sprites, um, for that, for the story intro, I, did all that stuff. I just, you know, grabbed whatever images I could find off of YouTube and I used um, photo applications to downgrade the photos to use two BPP, two bits per pixel, you know, get, get the graphics down to just using four colors, you know, you get your one transparent and then the other three. And there's a lot of dithering that I used. You notice that with the Wind Waker link and the uh, Ocarina of Time link, there's a lot of, uh, I think it's Floyd, Floyd dithering, I think is what it's called. I use that in, um, in Fran view is the app that I use to do all the, all the, the different link, the, like particularly the wind waker link and the Ocarina of time link that those are the PC apps that I use. And it's, it's like taking a GIF file almost, you know, like I said, the CHR swapping and there's different forms of the animations of link. Those are all different graphical pages in the ROM you know like I said if you were to take my ROM and just open it in a in a tile viewer and you go to scroll you'll you'll see how I did it same thing with uh, Ganon at the end the final version of, of Ganon same thing it's all swapping and it just okay. you know, that, that was a lot of fun to do and one last question uh, about you um, oh. what uh, why the nickname infidelity <laughs> It was the I'm first. I'm not sure if you get that a lot, but <laughs> no, it's the first. It's th this is actually the first interview I've ever had, believe it or not. And and again, I'm very thankful. Thank you, for, sure. you know, I really, you know, I appreciate it too. And the reason why I picked that name is because it was the first uh, band that I ever joined back in high school. Really? And, and that that's what it was. And um, I still use that name for um, you know, for ROM hacking. It was just like an alias. I didn't know what the, it was funny too, back in, you know, being a kid and not knowing what, what certain words meant, you know, cheating, you know, as a cheater. <laughs> and I didn't know, none of us knew that when, you know, we, you know, we had the band. I didn't come up with the, the name. It was, it was the band that I joined into. They already had the name, but I, I wanted to keep that, the name going, the band going, because the band, you know, disintegrated in high school. So I just tried to keep it going with the name. But then it kind of stuck with me with using it for like things online. And then once I got into ROM hacking, I just kind of used that name. So, but that's, that's the origin of the name. I'm not a cheater in any way. Just, <laughs> no, no, no. I honestly like, thought you were going to say like, you that's cheat the, the code because you, you know, you trick and you cheat the code and all that. That's what I thought inspiration well, came from, but. And it's funny too, because I remember when I, first coded Mega Man Ultra and when I first started coding I'm like the one of the first things I started doing was the graphical changes the text editing and I instead of passcode or password I wrote cheater you know like oh you know you're cheating you're getting ahead you know so I'm like oh I'll just throw that in there it's the same amount of uh same amount of letters used the same amount of tiles so I that that's why in Mega Man Ultra you see cheater and then I'm like oh wait a minute so it's funny how you mention it like that. You know, you cheat the code. I, I, I like that. I may have to steal that from you. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the to the Q and A part of the of the game itself. So, okay. 
what first question obvious question uh why zelda why zelda one zelda one is my favorite okay that's 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 my favorite that's my favorite one um my second favorite after that is um link to the past ocarina of time kind of after that and you know zelda 2 to me is like the black sheep of the series unfortunately i mean i like it i've I've beaten the game. I found everything in it, but my go-to is either the first one or a link to the past. Those, those two are really the ones that I love the most. Um, the reason why I did Zelda one is again, because it's Nintendo. I know six, the, the language 6502. Um, and back in 2010, I was trying to think of a game that I wanted to work on. Believe it or not, it was supposed to be something small. It wasn't supposed to be this big grandiose thing. It just, that's how it evolved. It just evolved into that. I just wanted to, I just want to make him how he, how he is in, you know, a link to the past. I wanted to try to do something like that, but then it just, just started taking on a life of its own. And then I just kept going on from there, but that's why, but it's, I love the original Zelda. I remember the first time I ever saw it and I just fell in love with that game. That the first quest, the second quest, um very near and dear to me i love that game yeah it definitely captures your imagination especially when you're like at, at such a young age I yes um now was this uh project a one man uh, you mentioned a second person so uh it's yep. fitting for the next question was this a one-man show or was this like a, a team effort uh how many people did, did you need it to make uh legend of link all the code all the yeah. Other than the graphic, all, other than the in-game sprite work, this was all done by me. Infidelity, there's no team. When you when you see something that's released by Infidelity, that's me. Graphics, sound, code, things like that. The only time that I've ever collaborated, you know, on a large project like was The Legend of Link, and it was Thanatos Zero. Thanatos Zero offered services to want wanted to wanted to do the the sprite work mm -hmm. and i love thanatos's sprite work it's it's incredible and i was like yes please absolutely i i, I would i would love for you to you know to do that so it took thanatos about like i said about about a year to get all the sprite work done but the music um the AI for the sprites and uh, the mechanics for Link, any, every, every, everything like that, that was all done by me. Um, I deleted the sound engine out of that and I inserted what, uh, again, I mentioned Matrix Z earlier mm -hmm. in the interview. Um, he created a, a document about the sound engine from particularly like games like Mega Man 3, 4, 5, um, they use a certain sound engine from Capcom and there's a certain address, um, 6C80 is the address. I still remember so he that. Decided, <laughs> he decided to call it the Capcom 6C80 sound engine. So that's the engine that I used for Legend of Link. And so all the music that you hear, I coded all of that in with a hex editor. No, no family tracker, no whatever, whatever that app is. I've I've never used it. Um, I did it all through a hex editor. Each so all these different Zavia tracks that are, to me, I thought they were lifted or or maybe imported from other. So you did it like by hand, not even by, by ear, but well, I guess in a way by ear, but by ear, by hand, every individual note, each square channel, the triangle channel. The noise channel. The only things that are not hand coded, uh, done, you know, done like uh, like what I did with the sound engine are the DPCM samples, like uh, the sounds of the dragon or like you know things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are all um, uh, sample files, and those those I'll you know were still original from the Legend of Zelda sound engine, but like the 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 music itself and the sound effects as well. Those are all individual. I had to do all that note by note. So every piece of music that you hear, I had to code that individually in hex. Wow. So you do have a background in music, like you meaning you you play music sounds like, right? 
Oh yeah, like we just talked about Metallica earlier. Yeah, I play. You yep, play I guitar, play. I'll take it. Bass. Yep, yep. Guitar, bass, drums, keyboard. Done it nice. all. Done it all. Thank it's you. One one uni universal genius right here. That's that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, the map itself, not the mapper, but the map itself of the town. Um, yes. It wasn't until I was doing research for this interview that I realized because I have not played long enough Awakening. Uh, my question was, did you redo the whole thing or you have to import or export uh, the map or graphics or tiles from the Game Boy version? And then somebody pointed out and I realized uh, it's the same uh, map of Awakening, but flip, like mirror flip, right? That's right, that's right. Now, See, the reason why I did that was because I never played Link's Awakening. I never played it at that time. Mm -hmm. And I am not the best level editor. I'm not, I'm not that great of a level designer. And a lot of people took note of that. You'll see a lot of negative reviews on romhacking.net with how, how I did that. And, and I'm cool with that. I can take the good and the bad. I have no problem. I'm not out to please the entire world. Um, but it definitely, my strong suit is code. My strong suit is doing coding, hacking, hacking code, things like that. Creating a level, that ain't me. And I and I and I and I admit that. If you think about it, my work after that, when have I put out a game with that's actually had like custom levels done in it? I haven't. Everything else has been basically tooling around with Mario or or doing the 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 Mega Man 4 port that I did from Nintendo to Super Nintendo. Um, the reason why, again, the reason why I picked Link's Awakening is because I never played it. I wanted it to be something fresh in my mind, like, oh, I think this would be cool for, for me to navigate through. And I didn't want it to be a mirror image of, well, it's funny you say mirror because it's flipped. I didn't want it to be like a carbon copy of, of the Link's Awakening map. So I, I flipped it and I had to draw the entire screen eight by eight tiles. There was a snarf blam from romhacking.net. I, I owe a lot of huge, huge thanks to snarf blam. Snarf blam noticed what I was doing with the legend of link. And he contacted me and he goes, I need to build you a level editor, a custom level editor for you. And I'm like, okay. So Infedit, he called it. So infidelity with with you know being infedit. able to edit. So he called the he called the program Infedit, and he goes anytime you want something added to this, let me know. So because I don't know how to write PC programs, I don't know C plus, Java. I I don't know any of that. I don't know how to write. I, I wish I did, but I just don't have the time to really learn that stuff. So he created the level editor for me, and then I was able to inject the tile sets and I was able to draw where I want all the tile sets. So I had to have the map of Link's Awakening open on my PC. And then on my laptop, I would just individually draw wow. the eight by eight tiles and then give it color. And you'll notice I added a lot of trees around the corners. Like there's a lot of additional trees mm -hmm. you'll see because obviously it's a Game Boy screen. And then I didn't realize that once I started yeah, drawing, right. wait a minute. So if you were to, if you see it opened up in a map, you'll see all these additional trees that I added to try to fill it in. But um, yeah, I picked that. That's why it's, it's Link's Awakening because I never played it. I flipped it because I didn't want it to look like, you know, an identical map. I just wanted to flip it. And, but then, you know, once, once after I released it and once it was out for like a good year, People were getting kind of like, oh, you know, I'm so used to some, you know, Link's Awakening and that being in that that castle or in that room and it's not there. And, you know, it was it was a learning process. I just wanted to show that I could, you know, make Link almost what he was in Super Nintendo, but have it in Nintendo, like, you know, with his sword mechanics, the way he's swinging the sword and the, the other items that I was able to let him have, like the hook shot and um uh, the Pegasus shoes and things like that. So that explains the map. <laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> the development time was three years, right? Yes. Now, uh, and I guess this is a 
question can answer itself after what you told me. My question was, was it that hard or it was lack of resources, but you doing everything, a one man show, three years is pretty decent. Like that, that makes sense, I guess. Yep. Yep. Just cause you know, I work a full-time job, family man, On top of that, <laughs> you know, whatever disposable time that I had, I was able to, you know, put into it. And again, being a one man show and just, um, you know, again, like I would complete something, but then something else would click in. Oh, wait a minute. What if, what if we add this? What if we add that? And then it just, like I said, it started snowballing and it started becoming into this way bigger project that I, that I didn't even, I never even meant for it to be that big. But then it was all these things that intrigued me. And it was things that, oh, I think this would be cool. I think people would like this. I think this would get people talking. People would like that. And like, um, have you have you played it all the way through? I I have I got to the point in the last castle where I think because I have the 2014 version. There's a glitch that happens where you cannot see what's going on. Oh, and I, I don't know. I think you have mentioned it, and that's one of the things you patched on the 2000. What is that? 17. I think it was 17. I patched. Yeah, someone was mentioning that like you can't see anything, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, and and eventually how I got out of it was because I refused to reset, so I was <laughs> basically moving blindly until I guess I hit a door somehow. Yeah, and I got out of it, and I was oh, so it was just a temporary graphical glitch, like like I guess like shutting down the lights, and I was able to save, and I haven't revisited since because now I'm debating. I finally encountered a guy. I'm gonna show images of uh, my costume cart that I you saw on Twitter, and yep. a lot of it is because it was my first repro or or hack turned physical, and it has now looking at other people's work and especially this guy who's here in Virginia too. Mm -hmm. It looks really garage made with all the duct tape and all that, like the uh, electrical <laughs> tape and all that. So now yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm a little embarrassed to show it. But since you have an update, and I, I don't have that yet, I talked to the guy. So the pictures and he's like, yeah, I can, I can, you know, read dump. I can reflash it. Not a problem. Uh, send me the once, once I was done with some of the footage I'm going to have to capture for this, uh, for this, uh, cause I can include an alternate between us and, and uh, um, gameplay. Uh, once I'm done with that, I'm going to send it to him. But I also read that if you have save files, you're going to have to say goodbye to them because you can use them on the update. Uh, apparently, you mentioned. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of code that um, messes with the SRAM, the, with the way I designed it. So sometimes, if there's, it depends on what I'm updating. But if it's any kind of program ROM, you're you're better off, you know, having a you know having a fresh save file. Unfortunately, um, it was just just the the nature of the beast when it came to came to working on that and running out of space because I actually started running out of space believe it or not towards the the right. latter half of production with that and i would kind of bleed into using sram as well for for additional code to be ran so it was it's a pain in the butt <laughs> now don't get me wrong like i'm more than happy to start all over again with that game so then uh, then i will finish and i'll probably finish it before i send it to this guy on this version anyway just to kind of compare what changes between one and the other mm -hmm. okay so Enemy, enemy placement, and I, I guess this is because you changed the engine so much, I actually deleted it and started all over. I was going to mention that enemy placement in the world appears to be random. Um, yes. There's uh, a lot of, uh, the screen seem to have overall only zero to two enemies, opposed to six or four that you find normally. Uh, was this due to like how heavy the content was? But it was just a personal uh, choice. I'm very glad you paid attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was I have a lot of things going on. The sound engine itself, um, there's a lot of checks that are going on within the game, um, hit detection as well, um, especially if you're using the boomerang. If you go to throw the boomerang, you'll notice it'll kind of judder a little bit because my code was kind of sloppy that I was writing. There's a lot of code that is running and uh, um, I'm running out of time during the NMI routines. And it's it just starts to progressively slow the game down. And when you have so many enemies on the screen, it really started to slow down. And the reason why the original 
Zelda was able to get away with that is, is because it didn't have all this additional code going on. Whereas my game, I have so much going on, being updated, being checked, that when I had six enemies, it was really, really slow. And it really upset me too, because, you know, I like having a lot of enemies on the screen, you know, the Octo Rocks and everything. Love having that, but I was just running, running out of space, running out of time. And then I noticed if I took an enemy or two out, then the, the speed of the ROM would, you know, be back to normal. So yeah, that the reason why I had to chop down all the, the enemies was because I was just, there's just too much code running at one time and it was slowing the game down. So that was the only thing I could figure out on how to slow, how to, how to pick up the, how to stop the slowdown from happening. There was another update I did, um, the sound engine, the very first build that was released back in 2013, um, the sound engine, the way I had it set up, um, I had the sound engine happening early on. And then when there was a lot of gameplay happening, the sound engine started to slow down too. And I'm like, oh, I can't have that because mm. I only want the game to slow down. I don't want the sound engine to slow down. So then I had to reposition where the sound engine was. I was told you should have that later in the ROM, have that one of the last things checked in the ROM before the NMI resets and goes back. So that's why um, after the first revision, the sound engine was vastly improved just because I had it near the end so that not the, the music wouldn't slow down anymore. It would just be the game itself. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, if, if I coded better back then, I could probably add in a little more to be honest with you, it, it was not a complaint. It's just that it's something I noticed because I, I played that engine so much, the Legend of Zelda yeah. one, that when I first start, one of the things I do, because you're weak, because you have the green tunic, because you only have three hearts, one of the yep. first things I do is first run through everywhere. Uh, I only leave one enemy per tile. That yep. way, whether you save or not, when you come back, you you don't get attacked by everything. It's just one per tile. And then you decide when well, I need to make more rupees, I'm going to start killing that last one and then it repopulates. So that's that's one thing that with yours doing a second, third run, I was like, I don't I don't see that massive. That's when I started noticing the massive number of enemies. Uh, yeah. But then again, I, it took me a while to realize. So it, it was not, it, it doesn't take away from the experience what I'm trying to say, at least in my experience, you know? Oh, and I, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, have you ever heard uh, from Nintendo knowing or being aware of, of this a bit tribute to their game? No, no, Nintendo never. I have no idea if they know about it. I would like to think they do. Um, I would like to think they know about Super Mario All-Stars NES that I've done. I would like to think they know about Mega Man 4 going to Super Nintendo now. I'd like to think they know about that. If they really, really knew knew about it or something, I think I would have been hit with a DMCA. Would have been hit with some as they usually decisions. do. Yeah, kind of like yeah, what happened to um, the Metroid Two that that awesome uh, fan made Metroid Two game where, ironically, Samus Returns for the 3DS was coming out, and then they get hit with a you know cease and desist with their their Metroid Two remake, which is. I, I love it better than the official Samus Returns, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I also like to think Nintendo knows about these ROM hacks because, um, and, and I feel terrible that I don't know the name of the ROM hack, but there's one for, I think it's Mario 3, where they created um, not the fireball, but the um, you can shoot ice balls to freeze enemies. I have not played that one. Yeah, I can't remember which which hack it was. I can't remember. And then out comes New Super Mario Brothers for the Wii. And then what's out there are the ice the ice balls that you throw and they freeze enemies. So I'm like, did they pay attention to that ROM hack and, and use that in there? Oh, great minds think alike. <laughs> you know, I, it, and it could possibly be that too. So I was like, oh, wow. Um, but it would be funny if I, I was, I would love if, love it to, if they if they knew what I was doing, if you know, because again, you know, I'm not trying to. There's there's no monetary gain or anything like that. What I'm doing, it's just I'm You're just not selling the game exactly. I'm just a fan of 
of their machine. I'm a fan of their games. I'm a fan of their work. And that's why a lot of it is I try to make everything that the, the things that I release, I try to make it look like official make it look commercial make it look like oh this is something that nintendo would have put out i, I like to do that I'm it does person. feel that way the, the legend of link uh, honestly it does and feels that much polish that that uh, official you can say uh and some people may not like that but it does it does have that feeling that it recreated me playing legend of zelda for the first time and as great as outlands is uh this one really capture it opposed to I because I played Outlands before yours and it was like this is great it's like playing Zelda randomized with some few new things essentially yeah. you know still the same game but yours really you know I really good. appreciate that thank you the thing I really like the most is the sword mechanics making him making the sword not just thrust but have the you know adjacent hit yeah yes. exactly and then adding the the charge for that for the sword and then make him spin around with the sword mm -hmm. the that was a lot of, that was a lot of fun to code yeah the spin attack that was that was a lot of fun the charge attack that was a lot of fun to do and it just again like i said things just started snowballing just started progressing and things that I, in directions that i didn't think it was going to go i just wanted to do something small and then it turned into this three-year project and it's gotten a lot of love, a lot of attention. People still love it. People still love playing it. And, you know, I'll still get comments from people about it. And that, that really means a lot. I have a sealed copy somewhere in my cabinet of it. I, I specifically bought an original Zelda one gold cartridge that the best one that I could possibly find just to have my game inside it, to have that gold cartridge. <laughs> just to have it like that. So I got that displayed somewhere. <laughs> I have mine and I'll, I'll show high resolution uh, pictures of it during this video. Uh, and you've seen it on Twitter. I have the platinum, platinum uh, silver, because I yeah. thought this, this evokes just as great as it, but I didn't want to just copy the gold uh, Zelda. And then I saw this, this company that was making orange uh, metal ones. It was do, doing the see-through one, see-through blue. And then I saw, platinum silver and I was like let me let me let me check it out and then when you see the picture you are uh realize this is the same except you know with a gray shade to it yeah the platinum yeah, that is perfect for your game that looked beautiful what you showed me I was like that was impressive that <laughs> that casing that 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 color that was that was really 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 nice thank you this is Frankenstein from different you know the, the one who flashed it the the uh, label who wasn't me I wish I could say but it wasn't me and then uh, the cartridge, you know, it's it's a, it's a whole Frankenstein. That by the time it came alive, alive, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's how typically that happens, you know, just hodgepodge, you know, here and there, bits and pieces, and and then it comes together, and you're looking at it, you're like, wow, this is something. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. That's how much love I have for your game. Well, again, and that and that means a lot, and not just to, not just to yourself, but to everyone else out there that that took time out of their lives and and money out of their pockets and just to do whatever they could i remember when people were first trying to get this working on original hardware and the leaps and bounds that they took and the the custom artwork that people would make for these for these repos of it and it, that just means a lot to me to know that there's so many people out there that really enjoy my work that they'll go to these lengths to to, to have their version of it their physic their physical copy version of of my work and that just means that means so much and it just makes me want to continue to to keep doing this and making more games and making more hacks and projects and seeing if people like it um i mean i've already seen people repoing mega man 4 on super nintendo and seeing the the artwork that they've been doing for that and those those look great as well so 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 people such as yourself and to everyone else that's doing it, I, my eternal thank you, my eternal thanks. It's, it's, it's really, I, I pay attention, I see it, and I'm very thankful to all of you that, that you. care about my work that much. Seriously, no, thank you. Really, seriously, thank you. Now, so, since, 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 the smile hurts on my face, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> since you touched that subject when it comes to repros, uh, and in, in my case and a lot of other people, we do it because we're going to have it. It, it's worthy of having it in our collection, the physical collection. So mm -hmm. how does it make you feel when it comes to like eBay, um, 
Mercari and, and, and places like that, that they're actually making money with your uh, work. See, I, uh, I, as it's, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, I personally don't seek monetary gain from this simply because I'm modifying copyrighted code. Exactly. That's, that's one way my, you know, I don't get served any notices or anything like that. I'm not out looking for money. I just, this is something that I love this and I just put it out there. A labor of love. Yes. Labor of love. And if you guys want to play it, that's great. How you handle it once it's out there, that that's on you guys. I mean, I'm not one to be like, that's wrong. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that. I'm not one to do that. All, all I care about is I want to have my work out there for people to try. If they like it, great. If they don't like it, that's fine too. How they deal with the repos on their end, you know, what they want to do, that's, that's, it doesn't bother me one bit at all because I'm working on something that's technically not mine. I didn't write that. I didn't, you know, I'm working on something that's copyrighted material. I didn't create Zelda. I didn't create Mario. I didn't create Mega Man. I didn't, I didn't create any of that. So I have no right to release anything and seek monetary gain from it. I don't. Now, how people do this with their repos, with the, 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 the cartridges or the stickers or the box art and stuff like that, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm not into it. That's why I really don't have an opinion on it because I really don't put, I really haven't put that much thought into it. You know, it's, it's you know, all I can say for myself personally, I don't look for monetary gain. I just want people to, I just want to get my work out there. And I just want to see if there's anyone else out there that likes what I've done. And if they like playing my game on an emulator or an Android or whatever kind of phone, whatever kind of handheld device or any kind of emulator on a, on an Xbox or a PlayStation or, or GameCube, Wii, or they want to play it on an actual Nintendo or an actual Super Nintendo on a, on an actual repo card or on a flash card, you know, it's as <laughs> so long as it's, on, yeah, I just, I just want I just want people to be able to enjoy my work. That that's that's all. I re, I I really don't have. You know, I I really can't. Ha I don't. I really don't have a definitive answer on people with with my games on like eBay or Macari or things like that. I mean, I'm honestly I'm kind of flattered that people really want to go to those links to try to put my stuff out there. But I mean, I, I I'm not one to say you know you shouldn't do that. I'm not you know I'm not the police. I'm I'm not out to police. You know, things like that you know i just you know i just kind of stay away from it i just mm -hmm. all i care about is i love what i do and to see if there's if, if anyone cares to play it i put it out there on the internet and have fun and if you don't want to have fun with it that's okay too awesome what's the reason of why is the rom so big is it graphics is it sound uh gold itself like why why was the reason of that Okay, so this ROM is two megabytes in size. I have a pro, my program ROM is 1024 kilobytes. My character ROM is 1024 kilobytes as well. Definitely, um, the reason why there's two chips is because I do um, um, character animation, CHR animation, CHR swapping. That requires a lot of, um, a lot of graphics. A lot of ROM space for that, and that's why I decided to go with the Mapper Five and using the bigger chips um, for program ROM. Definitely, the reason why you have such a vast outworld—not just the light world, but the dark world as well—the um, vast majority of that ROM chip holds all the the data for all the, the tile placements and all the palette placements for the 16 by 16 blocks. Each individual 16 by 16 block has its own palette ID. So that required massive amounts of pointer tables to be able to point to the block for the graphics and then point to the block for what that palette ID is stored for. Now, again, every single pixel in-game pixel is individual. There's no copying. I wanted to make it so if anyone ever decided now there hasn't been a ROM hack out there because it's, it's a, it's a disaster. 
the way I coded that it is, <laughs> it is a disaster. If you were to open that up and be like, what the hell did this guy do? What is this? This is a nightmare. So I'd like to think that's a reason why no one has really graphically edited. Cause if you really took the time, you can be able to design legend of link completely different, completely different. And, um, you just have to know where to find it in the ROM. I wouldn't be able to tell you now. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, I can probably dig up notes somewhere on my two previous laptops somewhere, but um, the reason why it's, it's those ROM chips are so big is because the sound engine two, that's big. Sound engine's huge because of all the different sounds that I have, all the different, um, the arrangements, um, the samplings. Um, I have three different hardwired bank locations just to have um, all the DPCM samplings to be able to be used. So that's another reason why, excuse me, that's another reason why the, I have such a huge ROM chip. Um, so yeah, basically, you know, I, the ROM chip itself, that's pretty, that's pretty full. How many if songs, not, tracks, audio tracks uh, on music do you think, uh, do you remember how many you included? It's over 30, I think. That also includes sound effects. It's got to be in the close to 30, I am, um, if I'm trying to think off the top of my head. There is a trick. There is a way to find out exactly as to how many is on there. I actually put this on Twitter not too long ago because I wrote, I wonder if anybody has used a uh, second controller on the file menu screen. It enabled the, some sort of sound test, I guess, only yep. on the file selection screen. Yep, yeah, yep. I was trying, the, the moment I got home, uh, I came to my <laughs> girlfriend's house and, and I brought the game and so what are you doing? I need to test this. And I couldn't figure it out. And then eventually I was like, oh, because I, I reread your tweet and I was like, you said at the registration file station, I was like, okay. And then I realized it doesn't do anything. And I think you reply, no, it's like called right. And once yep. I did, because I was doing up VA and then I did write VA and I was uh, okay. So it's a sound, and then I realized, oh, it's like a sound test, like a track test. Yep, that's right. Yeah, if you were to just start off and hit B on the second controller, the um, registration song would stop. And then you push oh. right, and then you'll start from zero, and it goes goes into hex. It'll go from zero to nine, and then from A to F. Then it'll go from 10 to 19, and then it'll go from 1A to 1F, and then it'll go to 20. So... I want to say it's in the close to 30, I think, of audio of um so, of background music and sound effects. Wow. I think I think that that's that's where I am with that. There's there's a lot. Yeah. I wanted to make sure each castle had its own had its own theme, had it had its own song. Um and it's it's nice to see some people noticing the um the callback to the the late 80s. Legend of Zelda cartoon when they get to the second castle. I, I, that, that I get I get a lot of smiles every time I see people that notice that. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's that's, that's the cartoon cool. from the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> so that's thank you. Right. <laughs> um, any other Easter eggs besides that one? Because I, I realize that by now it's been quite some time. People have not discovered them until you pointed them out. Any other Easter eggs that you want to share, maybe, or you rather share them along the way? I pretty much have a God mode in there. Really. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. It was for uh, for testing purposes. Usually, um, that's how those are. You can, you can you can break it pretty good if you were to try to beat the game with with all these things that you add on. I can't remember which code I used. It's it's the second controller. You use it during in game. It's either the dullard code, which is the Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat code, or um, I can't remember if I used the Capcom. Down, down, right, up, left, YB. I don't, I don't think I use that. I want to say I use Dullard. I think I use Dullard. I'll have to, I'll have to recheck it. But yeah, that game has has pretty much a God mode. Nice. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, I guess it's time I can tell people about it. You know that the game's been out there for over a decade, so <laughs> it's like I can. I can tell people that close to a decade yeah what was it 13 well, yeah close to a decade almost because i first released it in 13 yeah so we were getting there all right and no no one's found it i mean if someone was 
um, you know, fluent in 6502 and they really wanted to dig through it and they were checking out the controller inputs and, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd see it in there somewhere. But um, yeah, there's, there's a God mode in there where you can pretty much, pretty much do a lot of crazy stuff in that. <laughs> Very unlock nice. Of, unlock a lot of stuff, find a lot of stuff. But I, I want to say dullard. I want to say that's the code. Down, up, left, left, A, right, down. I think, I think that's what I put in there because I'm a huge fan of Mortal Kombat, the older ones. So, and I've always loved dullard. I've always loved that code. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, I'm uh, sure. but the sec- yeah, but the second controller is pretty much what does it. And I noticed that in game, if, if you're pressing buttons on the second controller, it's with just randomly or just one, it slows down the engine. I can't recall if it did or not. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, that's again, that's my experience on the NES on cartridge. Oh, really? So wow. As you're pressing buttons, you notice a little bit of a slowdown. It's not like game breaking, but you know, yeah. it, it is a little bit of a slowdown. And again, could be a byproduct of don't uh, flashing the. The, the the ROM into a cartridge, not sure, but that's, I haven't that's, tested it on the PC. Because the the I the only way I'm able to test it, other than that, the build that I have is is old. The one the one that I have, I think that's from like 2014 something. The one that the gold cartridge that I have. What I have now is Crix's, um, you know, and again Crix, you know, hope he's doing. He's I think he's in Spain now. I think I heard. I heard he's safe. So. Oh. So yeah, so love to Crix and his family. You know, I just want to get that out there. Um, so I'm using his N8 EverDrive Pro, the N8 Pro, N8 EverDrive. I use that in order to play my Mapper 5 games because now with that new EverDrive, we can play games that are larger than the, the default that he had back with um, the first N8 EverDrive. So anything that's, you can play games that are over 512 kilobytes, 728, I think, kilobytes. You can play bigger than that. So I forget what the max is that's allowed, but my max is oh, two megabytes. I'm not megabytes. 100% sure. I think it's eight. I think he has it up to eight, eight megabytes for the, um, the NA Pro. I think it's eight megabytes. And that that's, I would love to be able to do something like that on that side. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I had no idea. Maybe... Um, I'll, I'll check next time. I'll, I'll check tomorrow um, and see if that happens, actually, because I got to find out exactly what my code is. Is it dollared or is it <laughs> a Capcom code? I, I need okay. to remember. <laughs> okay. But no, thank I you for letting me it know. If I find it before you, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on to the next question. What is the what is the biggest obstacle you, you think or, or what, what was your biggest hurdles into completing this project? time <laughs> finding the time or how long it took this time it was um the the biggest the biggest hurdle man was probably just just, just drawing the game dr- just getting all the, the how it looked on links awakening just drawing it that that took that took a long time to get all of the graphics in there and make sure it matches and then trying to create all the trees to go around it. And then when I was doing the dark world, I was trying to add a little bit of differences, you know, kind of like how um, Link to the Past does it. Like certain areas you can really only get to unless, you know, you had the mirror. But in my game, I made it so the ocarina is the one that activates between light and dark. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but that took a while. That, that, took, that took months. Because again, you know, just, you know, I'm working full time. I have kids, family and everything. So um, I remember that taking, taking a lot of time, a lot of hand cramps because I was using a laptop doing that, trying to just draw all those individual eight by eight tiles onto, into the editor. Um, the other thing was um, doing the music because again, those aren't samples other than DPCM. The sound engine, like the, the background music, that I had to do all of that listening, listening to the music, s- slowing things down with different um, PC sound programs. Um, that took a lot of time. That took a couple of months to do. And then, like I said, for the graphics, I had to wait a year from Thanatos Zero for the graphics. I would get a little bit here and there, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't completed. 
you know, start to finish was a year it took to, to get the graphics for the game. So there was, but the, the, the biggest hurdle, again, the, the hurdle, the challenge was just making sure I got the graphics correct for, you know, for the map. And then again, mirroring it too. So I'm taking something that's starting from the left and now I'm putting it over on the right. So that was, that was a pain. I, I you know, I, I took a very difficult route for that. <laughs> I'm going to say it's spot on either way. I mean, it, it's. It was, I tried. Thank yeah. you. I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> I try. <laughs> uh, any regrets you may have looking back? And I guess that's tricky because you have updated your game, but something more major, like, for example, because I, I saw somebody mentioning, oh, I wish you had the, the, the fishing mini game from because uh, it's it. The engine is not Link's Awakening, but people are going to associate it with Link's Awakening, of course. But is yep. that something that could have been done with enough time or is just something that there's no you way? See, I never knew about the fishing game because I didn't know about Link's Awakening. I didn't know about it. I just wanted to use the background because I suck at level editing, <laughs> designing <laughs> levels from scratch. I'm I'm just no good. A lot of people, I got, I got a lot of people saying to me, if I didn't base it off Link's Awakening. It probably would have been a better experience for some people and for some others when it came to, you know, being immersed into the world of The Legend of Link if it wasn't based off of that. The other thing that I I kind of regret is I wish I did a better job with um, placements of items and stores, shops, things of that nature. I, I didn't do the best job. Another thing I regret is I, I came up with this great mechanic of underground tunnels leading to different areas to the outworld, uh, which wasn't done in the original game. I wanted to have that, like, again, from a, a lot, a lot of, I, I tried bringing over a lot of things from A Link to the Past. There's nothing that I took code wise out of the game and injected. I did it all. This is all you know, brand new assembly that I entered into the game. I was just trying to, implement different ideas like oh underground caverns leading to different sections of the outworld mm -hmm. and then there was some i think that had dead ends and that kind of irritated some players so i was I gonna kind of ask yeah there's a there's a cavern uh, and i think it's near one of the first uh, fairies you find where yes. you mean the if you actually because if you first encounter it you don't realize because you have to shift between uh stages for you to see it but you come That's out right. to the same place you could have done walking so was exactly. that just out of a test? Was that a mistake? Was that just, it just happened? Like, cause you do have some that, you know, takes you to a completely different part. That's, that's not a question, but uh, yeah, there's for those that. who like, like to bring that as a complaint, uh, what, what was the reason on that one? I think it was just an oversight to be quite honest, because a lot of them were, there, there, was, there was reasons for these underground caverns. And I think it was just an oversight with, with that one where it just led to a dead end. And I'm not one to lead a player into something that's to waste their time. And I, and I felt bad about that. And I just never got around to, to either fixing that or, or just getting rid of that altogether. Because there was, I was more worried about game-breaking glitches and not so much improvement things. Because... If I started doing that, then the floodgates would open for people to be like, oh, I want to see this. I want to see that. You should do it this way. You should do it that way. And it's like, that's not what this is about. This, this is the game. But I'm, I'm always open to fixing something that is detrimental to the game, that that breaks it. You know, something that like a, yeah. like a really bad glitch, an abusive glitch or a crash or something that like a like something that hangs or freezes something like that that's i don't want to have any of my projects out there like that so i try to fix it um but yeah improvements i i try to stay away from because again that just opens up the floodgates for oh i think you should add this i think you should add that i think this would look good if you did this and then it just turns into everybody else's work mm -hmm. and that's just you know i just i just i just don't want to I don't want to entertain that. I don't. I appreciate people that want to see the game do stuff like that. I really do. I appreciate it. And there's a lot of great ideas that that have been presented. It's just I just personally don't want to go down that road because, you know, I that'll take me away from doing other other projects that I have in mind. And this has actually happened to me before. There was, you know, I was helping somebody out with something and it kind of 
diluted another project that I was in the mood for and it never came to never came to light. So I have to be careful with, you know, doing stuff like that because if I'm in the middle of something and I'll get taken away from it. And one there was there was one promising project, but you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, after coding with amazing results, I might add, uh, for this system, for the NES, uh, you're quite welcome. What, what makes the NES a, a, a interesting platform from a technical standpoint that, that, that you can uh, um, tell people? Like, what makes it appealing to you as a, as a programmer? It's not really appealing. It's really a bitch to work for. I, I heard. <laughs> I, I, I am not great at coding. I well, well, the code, well, the, the language, a script, that's it. But yeah, the language is, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's primitive. It's a primitive language. That's a word. Um, it's, but once you know how to use it, you can even use it on Super Nintendo, which I that's, heard. that's it's another, a plain, that's, uh, based uh, um, processor. And technically yeah. they could have make it. And I guess that was the idea to make it backwards compatible at some point. Yes. Yes, there's a there's an emu there's a native mode and an emulation mode built into the Super Nintendo. That would have and been. Nice. We're going to. I don't know why they they stopped. I don't I don't know the full history of why they didn't decide to utilize the emulation mode and and do the the backwards compatibility, but it uses the same the same language. It just you now have 16 bit operations that work on top of the 6502. So that's a that's a big big reason why I wanted to try to port a game from Nintendo to Super Nintendo because I'm like I already know the language. All I need to do now is learn the the hardware, learn how the the Super Nintendo uses the PPU, how it draws to the screen, you know, how it refreshes, things like that, how the sound works. That was a pain in the pain in the butt to figure out was the sound, how that worked. I I needed a lot of help with that. Um, but the thing that's just for me with Nintendo, it's just that's the first system I really, really fell in love with. Just I just thought it was the sleekest, the coolest system. My my cousin had it. That was the first time I ever saw it. it was at my cousin's place and watching him play that and seeing all these games. And it was just everywhere in the 80s. You know, I was a little kid in the 80s and the commercials and every all the stores, world of Nintendo was everywhere. And then growing up, I always wanted to like make my own game and see if I could ever do that. And then I found out what emulators were. And then I found out, oh, you can actually edit code. And, and it was just really fun, you know, seeing, seeing your changes. Like some of the first changes I did was just editing colors or changing the sky in the first one, one of Mario brothers to black or changing Mario's name to say something else and text to something else. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's a pain. I mean, I'm, that the thing that it, it, it intrigues me because it's it's a system that I personally fell in love with and just I love the games for it and just wanted to see if I could do anything with it, learn how to hack hack the games. And I've always been into that kind of thing, you know, just in I wish I could do it with other systems, but I just really don't have the I just don't have the time right now. But I would love to do like Sega Genesis. I would love to be able to do that. Um now I've done Super Nintendo. I mean, I could probably, you know, build off of that too. But um, it's it's a, it's a pain to work with because there's there's um, you you only have with Nintendo you only have a little bit amount of time to do a lot of updates while the screen's trying to be drawn. You can't get you can't. It's 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 very tricky with timing. It, and, and I've been working on this thing since 2005, and I still can't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> like there'll be times where I still get slow down, you know, it's, it's a, it's a pain. Um, I'll go to nest dev, great website, great community to, to learn about the Nintendo. There's, there's a lot of brilliant, bri I swear to God, it's people that used to work for companies or work for Nintendo. I swear that these people just, they know all the insides and outsides of that system and how to get the best out of it. And it, there's so much, infinite information out there as to how to work on that machine and again and i still can't get some of the timings right <laughs> well it's not your fault i gotta say like for what we've seen it is the least of of, of your problems you know um 
What was the video game experience that made you want to do this as a hobby? Because it's obviously not for a living, but what, what was that game experience that, that pushed you into pursuing something like this? Oh, uh, oh ROM hacking? Mm-hmm. Um, that would be seeing all of the Super Mario, the, the trillions of Super Mario ROM hacks in the very mm -hmm. early 2000s. Mm -hmm these impossible ROM hacks, these like pixel perfect jumps, like you would, you would need to know, you would need to be the creator of the game in order to, to get through a level. It was things like that, seeing different colors and different designs of the levels. And I'm like, wait a minute, how, how? And that really intrigued me. I didn't know what ROM hacking was in the late nineties or anything like that, you know? I, I didn't know any of that stuff existed. I didn't know emulators existed. I was I graduated in '99. I didn't I didn't know any of that stuff. <clears throat> so, a friend of mine, he had Nesticle, mm -hmm. and I saw a hack of it, it was it was a hack of Super Mario Brothers. He put it on, and the 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 title Super Mario Brothers was missing. It was just a plain background, and I'm like, this ain't Mario Brothers. He's like, oh yeah, it is. And it was a very, very uh, NC-17 looking, <laughs> uh, NC-17 looking Mario hack where the, the green tubes, you can use your imagination is what the tops of those tubes were. Mm -hmm. and the fireballs, you can use your imagination as to what the fireballs were being, instead of being fireballs that were being spit out. So I saw that and I'm like, this, this is, this is insane. This, first, it's like, this is really bizarre. But at the same time, it's like, how are they able to do that? And I had I no did, idea. They did something like that, thanks to, to Nesticle, nothing that hit the scene for people to remember. I, I just kept it between my friends and, you know, emulate emulation friends. And just like you said, it was just like being a teenager, putting something not suitable for work, coming out of the question mark. And because yeah. Nesticle enabled you all of a sudden, somebody without experience, to edit those styles, to being able to edit. That was how I got introduced to ROM hacking. And I, yeah, it was through Mario 1, you're right. And I like to say that, I like to think that Nintendo looked at that trillions of Mario 1 engine hacks and thought people are having fun with this. Mario Maker, you know? And oh. it's such a huge, now franchise, because they have two games and the multiple yeah. systems like the DS and, you know, Switch now, Wii. Um, Will you, I, I would like to think that that's something that they see and they realize and then they market it and then bring it to the masses, I guess, the right way, you know, for them. I absolutely 100% agree with you. That's where I think Mario Maker came from because there's just an infinite sea out there of these ROM hacks. And they're like, wait a minute, we should capitalize on this. Try to cut back on these ROM hacks that are out there and everything. And let, let's let's try to, build off of this this is they they see how they've they're not stupid they see how popular the stuff is they have google they can punch in their own company name they can punch in their own mascot and then they'll be able to see all the things that we're able to see that we that we put in the google and you know i say google because that's the search engine i use i'm sure i'll get like oh you should be using this you should be using that <laughs> so but i mean they, no, they, no, no. They're, they're able to see what we're able to see that's out there Mm -hmm. and, I, and I completely agree with you because I feel the same way. I think that's where Mario Maker came from. It originated because Nintendo saw the, the plethora of, look at all these ROM, look at, look at this, look at all these creations, look at this, we can do that, we can be, but, and they made it so much better. You know, obviously, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's their, their creation. You know, I love it. I, I love it for the Switch, love it for the Wii U, seeing how you can use the, the pad and everything. And, you know, my kids play it. They design their games and put it online and it's you know it's it's incredible it's it really is incredible um but i i truly believe that's that's how that originated too they saw what's going on out there and they're like no we can do that we can do that too <laughs> yeah exactly and then they're probably thinking we can get away without putting another new super mario brothers out there because we're too tired of creating these games we'll let everybody else do it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> your favorite zelda game of all times new and old uh, consoles? That is a tie between the Legend... It's, and I'm sorry, it is. I can't pick one. It's a tie. It has always been a tie for me. It's Legend of Zelda for Nintendo 
in a link to the past for Super Nintendo. It's those two. Thank you have you. the game that you have the game that started it all. And then you have the game that really set the standard, the the staple of everything that's come after that, really, if you think about it. Themes, weapons, you name it. Everything pretty much originated from a link to the past. It all starts from there. And that's I agree. I agree. That's that's my pick as well. Yep. It's a great game. I have a shirt. I have the, I have the shirt of A Link to the Past. It's a green T-shirt. I have it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's people, you know, who consider from hacking a waste of talent, which you have a lot of, obviously. Have you uh, considered making a game from the ground up and have somebody like Limited Runs or or other other publishers just you know do the the rest of the work and you stick to coding? Have you ever considered that? Um, the, the, the most that I've done is I have, I mean, not a, a game from the ground up on, you know, like, like an idea that I've had, but I've, I have coded games from the ground up. I've done Pong um, and I've done Connect Four from, from the yeah. ground up. That's, um, I never really finished the sound engine for that. That's kind of bare bones and it's, it's not, it's, I actually, I forget, I forget what I used for that. Excuse me, I forget what he used for the sound engine for that. Um, but to create a game, it's just that that's really hard because I, I would have to find a team, you mm -hmm. know, someone to do graphics for, um, and then build off of that, like creating, you know, like like a like a rough draft of, or something. Like there's 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 definitely been times where I've wanted to try something like that. I just never really got around to it. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now it'll never be for super nintendo because there's just too much involved you know i worked on that for six months with Mega Man 4 and seeing how that machine operates it's like no i need a team for that there's just too much if i was to build a game from the ground up it would definitely be an nes game it wouldn't be on any other system it would be on that because i know that machine very very well i i can do whatever i want with that machine anything i want i can do it on that but um i haven't really as of late, I just really haven't gotten around to thinking like, you know, something from the ground up. Um, not really. Later down the road, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always there's, there's always that later down the road. There always is. Um, I, would, I would, you know, like to try that at some point. I would. But um, I have seen it from from others that have done it. And it's, it's really intriguing, really interesting. Um, it's just as to what I would like that I would like to do a a shoot 'em up or a shmup. Mm. I would like to I would like to bring that over. Not 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 necessarily something like Radius or anything like that, but I would like to something from a like a Genesis style, something fast and mm. like that, bring it over. All right. I would like to do something like that from the ground up. I've always had, you know, passion for the the shoot 'em ups. <laughs> Me too. I, I love them a lot. I collect too many of them and don't have enough time to play them, actually. <laughs> I know. I have all, all my retro systems, and I'll just sit there and I'll stare at them because <laughs> I don't know what to play. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I'll go back to marijuana, I guess, or sell the one. <laughs> That's yeah, what I do. Know, yeah. <laughs> and lastly, uh, what's next for Infidelity? Uh, any, current, any current projects you want to share uh, to the people that you want to tell, either upcoming or currently being uh, done that you're involved in right now? The one I'm current, it's 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 something that's small. It's something my wife wanted me to wanted me to do. It's I already put it out on Twitter. Um, I've already shown concept um, video of it with um, uh, Super Mario Brothers three. She was saying, "Oh, it would be great if we could have, you know, Princess Toadstool, you know, as a playable character, like flying around and stuff." And and I was like, "Hold on oh, a minute." I took out I my laptop. Of that. Yeah, and I hovering. Yes, yeah, and I, I added, I just edited Mario's mechanics and just made it so when he jumps, I just remove his velocity when he comes back down. I just kind of create a subroutine from that and just have checks going on with the A button, and you know, I add an and counter to just see for how you know how long we keep them keep them up there for. 
and and it looked really cool. And um, yeah. someone um uh, got some someone on Twitter helping me out with with the graphics for for Princess Toadstool. And you know when the time comes, you know I'll I'll share that with everybody. And he did a phenomenal job. I'll just say that it looks really cool. I just need to get around to it because. She told me this, like, I can't even remember. How long ago was that? Oh, man, I feel guilty. <laughs> so I need to get that going because it, because it, it, that would be really cool. I'm, it's, it was, so, again, this is the problem I have. It's something that was supposed to be small. Now it's turning into this bigger thing. So um, it's still in the works. I don't know exactly when it'll be finished, but, um, but that, that's going to be really fun. So that, that's the current thing. That's, that's the current project that's going on right now um after that i'm not sure um it's just you know if, if something something pops up and it's like oh i want to try that and then it's something that i'll try but for at the time it was nothing but then she had to go mention princess toadstool mario 3 and i'm like oh no why'd you say that <laughs> <laughs> but I, so i and again like i said i have to see it through so this will be done so <laughs> all right all right where can people find you uh, on the web if you want to share besides romhack.net or, or if you want to share your social media sites or not it's really up to you no, they can they can find me on twitter at infidelity um the, that lower slash nes so infidelity the low slash nes uh that's where they can find me and you know i'm happy to answer any questions and if anybody wants to reach out for me for anything you know you can you can see me there uh, not only do I do ROM hacking, but I also work on um, retro consoles. I, I love to solder. I've been soldering for over 20 years, and I, that's another passion of mine. Uh, currently, I'm just building Sega Neptunes, which is the Model 2 Genesis with the 32X fused together. So I've been doing a lot of those. Um, so yeah, those are my my two passions: ROM hacking and you know and soldering consoles and trying to get the best out of my consoles with soldering um so that's pretty much those are pretty much the two things that i do but yeah if anybody wants to you know if they're, they're curious and want to check check out my check out the stuff that i do and the games that i do or they want to reach out to me like i said at infidelity low slash nes um and yeah like you said romhacking.net they anything that i release people always upload onto romhacking.net. So just find infidelity, look for my my name on there, and then you'll be able to see all my submissions. And, you know, and, and again, I'm open to, you know, people that want to thank me for my work and some, you know, and again, I've, I've gotten plenty of negative, negative reviews about my, my work. And, and again, I appreciate that. That's fine. I'm not out to please everybody. So I, you know, I don't get offended by, by people that don't like my work. And, um, you know, so it's uh, really not much I have to much enough to say about all that. You know, it's just, you know, I just put my stuff out there and I just love to share my work. And if people like to play it, that's great. And if not, you know, that that's fine, too. I understand that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, as part of the community, I, I want to thank you. This 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 has been great. Uh, so much. So many questions uh, since I first encountered your game. I wanted to ask and. One of the reasons it, it, my site is, uh, my uh, channel is, you know, fairly new, but this this was the interview I wanted to do. I remember in my head, like I had, you don't know this, but I had this interview happen already 10 times in my head, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All these different questions I always had. And, and I think you appreciate it for taking the time to do it. Uh, it it's, it's a blast, thank you so much. And uh, we'll definitely be seeing you, I'm, I hope. I hope so too. I appreciate it. I hope this isn't my last interview, really. This this is my first interview, believe it or not. So, and again, I thank you very much for reaching out to me and wanting to take the time out of your schedule as well. You know, not just mine, but yours as well, you know, to sit down and talk about Legend of Link and everything else that I've been doing. I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the lengths that you've gone to play my games and the length that you've gone to try to get a hold of me finally so we can get this interview going. I, you know, I feel bad, you know, it's, you know every you know everybody's busy you know we have lives and stuff you know so i'm just glad that you know we were finally able to take the time to sit down and you know and i was it was it was an honor to listen to all the, the questions that you had and to answer them the best that i could answer the questions for you so you know again i really appreciate it and to to all those that you know 
that have that that watch this you know i appreciate you for watching and taking the time to listen and i thank all of you that are a fan of my work and continue to want to see the things that i release again you know it means a lot to me you know i like i said you know i go out there on the internet and i see the things that people write and the things that people say about me and i'm i'm blessed i'm honored i'm i'm very appreciative and um you know it really gives me the drive to want to keep you know, bettering myself at what I do with, with coding and, and hacking and bringing things on different, different systems and stuff like bringing something to Super Nintendo. That was, that was really something I'm really, really proud of that. So, um, sure. again, thank, you know, and thank you. Thank you again for wanting to have this interview. I really appreciate it. My first interview. So I'll never forget this. So <laughs> thank you so much. I'm honored to say thank that. You. I'm so honored as well. So thank you very much. And again, to all those that take the time to watch this video, I, thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So people don't forget to follow, like, and share Exodus Retro Nation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fidelity. You're awesome. They say You're don't meet your heroes. I'm glad I did. Oh, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope Take you have care, a good man. Take care. Thank you. Have a blessed night. God bless. Good night.